What does it really mean to be a Christian? In this world today, sadly, the majority of Christians that you see are terrible examples, terrible witnesses to those who are not saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. People claim to be Christians. They live lives full of sin. You see them out in the bars all the time getting drunk. They're drug addicts. They're porno addicts. They sleep around on their wives or their husbands. They sleep around if they're not married. They're homosexuals. There's just no desire for people to want to be like most Christians or to have what most Christians have. <clears throat> In order for you to want to have something that someone else has, it has to be desirable. It has to be something that they have that you don't that you would like to have in your life. And sadly, there are very few Christians who represent Jesus Christ. See, Christians, we're Christians. Christians, we represent Jesus Christ. And sadly, very few Christians actually represent Jesus Christ in any form, fashion, or manner. See, Jesus Christ paid the price for us on the cross. He died on the cross for our sins, for yours and for mine. And he rose again on the third day and went back to heaven to be with God. He broke the bonds of sin. No longer was it necessary to do animal sacrifices like it was in the Old Testaments. All that needed to happen was we needed to come, admit to Jesus Christ that we have sinned and fallen short of his glory, admit that we believe he came to earth and died on the cross for our sins, Ask him to forgive us of our sins, cleanse our heart, and then we're saved. See, most people don't, don't understand that most human beings have no clue that we are going to live forever in one or two places, heaven or hell. All humans are born with the Spirit. That's what makes us different than any other creature on the planet. Animals only have a soul. Humans have a soul and a spirit. When we die, when our life ends, when that silver cord the Bible talks about, which is our life, breaks, wherever we are at that moment in time with Jesus Christ determines our eternity. If we're truly saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, if he's Lord and Savior of our lives, if we live the way the Holy Bible says, cover to cover, including repenting of sins after we're saved, do what the Bible says, then when we die, we'll go to heaven. Or, if Jesus comes back in the rapture, which is imminent, any second of any day, he's coming back just like that, that fast, we'll go with him to be in heaven. But if we don't meet those criteria, if we're not saved by his blood, or if we are saved by his blood, we're backslidden, we have a lot of sin in our lives, unconfessed sin, sin patterns, iniquity. We're not going to be raptured. We're not going to go to heaven. We'll go to hell. Okay? It's plain and simple, my friends. It's multiple choice, A and B. We're going to spend forever in heaven with a brand new body that feels pleasure and joy and comfort more than anything you can ever imagine. But we'll spend forever in hell with that same body that's going to feel pain and suffering and agony forever. There's no middle ground. There's no maybes, ifs, ands, buts, any of that kind of stuff. Even if you're not sure, even if you doubt in your mind there's a heaven or a hell, even if you don't know if you believe that or not, why would you take the chance? Why would you take the chance of spending forever in hell when it's so easy? to ask Jesus Christ to save your soul, to be Lord and Savior of your life, to live like the Holy Bible says. It's a great life. I wouldn't trade my life for any anything else. I love living for Jesus Christ. It's just, it's a joy for me. It's, it's a honor. It's, my life's full of blessings. It's a no-brainer, my friends. You're going to spend forever in heaven or hell. You have to make the right choice. After you've prayed that prayer, to ask Jesus Christ to forgive you of your sins. That's just the beginning. It's not 
like so many people, so many Christians, again, there's so many phony Christians, so many Christians today say, you say those words and then you're guaranteed to be in heaven. It's not that way. Once you're saved, once you pray that prayer, ask Jesus Christ to forgive you of your sins, and I'll have that at the end of this video, by the way. We'll pray it if you want to pray with me. Then, it all starts. And again, it does not end <coughs> until you're either raptured or you die. But what happens next is, you go out and get you a King James Version Bible. The King James Version Bible is the only Bible that's accurate. The true Word of God. The rest of the Bibles they have none of these are watered down. They're, they're poisoned. I don't care what anybody says. They just gut them. The 2011 NIV Bible that's so popular now came out last year. They took 65,000 words out of the Bible. And the Bible says at the end of the book of Revelation, if you change even one word, take one word away from this book, I'll take away your eternity in heaven. If you add one word, I'll add to you the plagues contained in this book. People don't believe God. They think he's joking. They think he only meant things for the old days. God does never change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So get you a King James Version Bible and open it and read it every day. It's the living, breathing Word of God. It's your food. It's your water. It's your nourishment. It feeds your soul. Eat it. Take it into your soul every day. Feed your soul. Feed your spirit. Jesus Christ is your new best friend now. Pray to him every day. He wants to hear from you. He'd love to talk to you every day and just meet with you. You'll want to get water baptized. Very, very important to signify. You go under the water. The old man goes under the water. The new man comes out of the water. You're showing the world. You've been saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. And you want to show that as a, as a living testament, being water baptized. As you live for Jesus Christ, in what little time we have left before he comes back in the rapture, Pray that he would fill you from head to toe with the Holy Spirit. When you're saved, the Holy Spirit moves into your heart, but you get to be what is known as sanctified as he just totally fills up every space and takes away the desire for you to sin, the desire for you to do the bad things you used to do. Are we still going to sin? Oh yeah, people sin, and, and you can't help it. Should we sin every day as a mature Christian? No. The more you mature in Jesus Christ, the more you get to be like him, the more you hate sin, the more sin is driven away from you. See, most Christians will tell you they can sin all they want because they claim Jesus Christ paid the, Christ, the price on the cross for all sins, past, present, future. It's untrue. The Bible says countless times it's not true. And you can look up what's called a concordance with the Bible. You can get it at a bookstore. It'll show you things. You can look up things in the Bible to give you the relations to it. But you can't continue to sin in your life without repenting. See, if you repent of the sin, Jesus Christ will forgive you. But you can't keep sinning. You just can't do it. Because if you do, you're not going to go to heaven. You have to live a pure and holy life. See, God is pure and holy. He's perfect. He's never sinned. Jesus Christ is pure and holy. He's perfect. He's never sinned. He's the God-man. Never sinned in his life. The Holy Spirit, obviously holy spirit, he's never sinned. They're different, but they're the same. They're called the triune. Trinity, the three in one. And you can't be living a life that's not holy around them. And see, that's why these Christians don't feel like they have sin in their lives or they don't care because if you sin and you don't repent, that sin continues to build up and build up and build up. And see, the Holy Spirit, as a Christian, he's your conscience. And if you have a lot of sin in your life, the Holy Spirit's not going to live in your heart. He can't be around that filth. He's going to pack his bag. He's going to move out. And he will not come back until you fall on your knees and repent of your sins after you're saved. That's why they don't care about sin because their conscience is gone. The Holy Spirit's gone. They just don't want to believe the truth. And it's really, really sad. This is the best resource next to the Bible, especially if you're a new Christian. Google this name, Dan Corner, D-A-N-C-O-R-N-E-R, -E and then put eternal security next to his name. You'll pull up his site. And it has, it'll say OSAS all over it, once saved, always saved. It'll have tons, every one of those scriptures in the Bible I told you about <coughs> that prove you can't sin after you're saved and not repent. It's all in there. And just read those. Take those to your heart. And again, a lot of stuff that he preaches in there, he writes, is from the 
the NIV Bible, which I don't like, but just take your King James Bible, all the verses there, it's all scripture, and read it from your King James Bible and understand what it says and know the facts that you can't do that. And see, these people who are once saved, always saved, they also have to come and read and know the facts. If they don't, then they're not going to go to heaven in the rapture or any other time. They're headed to hell unless they repent of those sins. It's a fact. Also, as a Christian, you'll want to try to find a good church to go to, a Christian church. And take that King James Version Bible with you whenever you go. Don't read what they have up on the screen. Forget that. Read your Bible. Open it. When the preacher puts verses of the Bible up on the screen, if what he puts up there doesn't match what your Bible says, close that Bible, get up and walk out. Not the place for you. Don't come back to that church. Find a different one. We have to be somewhere where the Bible is preached the right way. It has to be. You want to find a church to that, that preaches the Bible the way that it is? It's very hard to do. I'm going to warn you now. It's extremely hard to do. But you want to find somewhere to worship that preaches out of that the Bible the way it's written. And when you find there, get involved in the church. Volunteer to help out in different ministries. <clears throat> help out with children, with the elderly. Maybe you can cook. Maybe you can do nursery, whatever. There's always some way to be involved. Maybe you can get out involved witnessing out in the community. There's all kinds of ways to get involved in the church. Be an usher. Lots of ways. And if you get involved in that church, get a membership there. Become part of that church. Part of the family of God. And you'll want to tithe. Give 10% of your income to God. But you want to make sure you're going to the right kind of church because if you give 10% of your money to a poison church, that money's going to poisoned ministries. You want to, it's, it's just so hard nowadays, and I'm so sorry if you're a new Christian. I'm very, very sorry that it's like this, but it's just tough. And the Bible said it would be in the last days that there'd be a great falling away from the church, from God, called the great apostasy. People would flock to hear people that would say what their itching ears want to hear, to flock to liars, false prophets, false preachers, false televangelists. They're everywhere now. But you need to really get involved in that. Get and just start reading that Bible because everything in the Bible, Genesis to Revelation, every verse, every chapter, every book, all 66 books is all relevant. It's all pertinent to our lives today. God's word never changes. It's the same the day he wrote it, the same today and the same tomorrow. We got to get serious, my friends, about what the Bible says. Everything that I've mentioned, very, very important to be a Christian. Those are the things you need to do. Those are the minimum things you need to do. You just keep reading the Bible. It'll give you more and more and more ideas because, again, eternity is forever. We can spend it forever in joy, in ecstasy, in unknown, unknown pleasure and joy and just peace and love and happiness in heaven. Or we can spend it forever in pure agony, pain, suffering, heartache, terror, anger, hatred, separation from God forever in hell. It's the only two options, my friends. So if you knew there was a free way to guarantee you'd be in heaven, and you didn't take it, then you're crazy. It's a no-brainer. There's no, no option, really. Just understand the Bible is real. Understand what's going on in the world today, all this craziness, all this madness, all prophesied in the Bible. It's all part of the end times. That's why things are so bad and so crazy. The world as we know it now is getting ready to end. It's time to get right with Jesus Christ. It's time to be saved by his precious blood. And if you have been saved and you're backslidden, it's time to repent. Because you're about to run out of time, my friends. And you don't want to do that. Hell is forever, but so is heaven. Make the right choice. Choose Jesus. Choose heaven. It's an eternal decision. You'll never regret it. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I love you so much. And I thank you for your love and for your mercy and for your goodness and for your kindness. I thank you that you died on the cross for our sins and rose again on the third day. You're so precious and wonderful to us. And I thank you. You saved my soul. And all the times that I was backslidden, living in sin, you allowed me to repent. You pulled me out of the, out of the miry clay, out of the filth I was living in and, and dusted me off and gave me another chance many times. And I praise you, Jesus. I just pray that those listening to this video would come to know you as Lord and Savior who don't know you as Lord and Savior and those who are backslidden who repent and come back to you before it's too late. I don't want to see anybody die and go to hell. You know my heart grieves, Jesus, for those that are lost. Please just 
soften hearts, make them tender, and just stay on them, Jesus, convict them, and just don't give them any peace in their lives until they come to know you as Lord and Savior, or until they repent of their sins if they're a backslidden Christian. Time is short. We have to get serious. We have to get ready now. I love you so much, Jesus, and I thank you for everything. Amen. My friends, if you do not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, pray this prayer with me. Jesus, I know I've sinned. I've done bad things in my life, and I'm sorry. I believe you came to earth. I believe you died on the cross for my sins. I believe you rose again on the third day, and I believe you went back to heaven to be at the right-hand side of the Father. And since that time, you've been making a place in heaven forever for all Christians. Please forgive me of my sins, Jesus. Wash my heart white as snow. Make me pure and holy, a new creature in Christ, a child of the King. Please live in my heart. In your precious name I ask it, amen. And when you pray that prayer, Jesus says in the Bible that all who come to me and ask shall be saved. And again, remember, after that prayer, everything in the video I've discussed is what you need to do in your life. If you want someone to pray with you, if you have questions or concerns, you just want to talk, send me a message or an inbox. I'd love to talk with you and pray with you. That's why I'm here. I'm here for you. If you happen to have a friend or a neighbor or a loved one or a co-worker, anyone who does not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, if you're sick, you have a sick friend, family member, relative, co-worker, a sick pet, if you need a job, car, home, food, clothes, water, whatever your needs, if you want someone to pray with you that believes, send me a message. I'll pray for you every day, believing in my heart, speak with my mouth, knowing that God will answer all my prayers if I pray in His holy will. I see it all the time, my friends. I get hundreds of messages from around the world in all my ministries for asking for miracles in their lives and they need miracles and God performs. He, he, he answers his prayers and performs miracles in their life. Praise the Lord. All for his glory, never for mine. It's all about Jesus Christ. I'm nobody. I'm nothing but the very least in his kingdom. A tiny fish in a huge pond. But I love Jesus and I work for him every day of my life. I love you guys. I pray for you every day. May God bless you. Share this video and link with others.